Hey guys, this is Renee. Welcome back for another video. This video is presented by BM Trading. Learn to code your own expert advisors. Link in the description. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about system strategy development because I uh, recently had a look at this again after many, many months of not um, working on new strategies or strategy development at all. And uh, many people ask like, how do you create new strategies, how do you test it, etc, etc. So this is why I want to take you a little bit into my um, into my mind and what my ideas were with this. Um, yeah, with this in, in general. And um, as you know, if you like followed me for a while, you probably realized that I kind of moved a little bit away from very short term trading more to like, it's not really string trading what I do, but it's definitely not scalping or very short term trading because I think if you trade too many trades too quickly in and out, it's just the disadvantages are just too big. So currently I am mainly trading trades um, in in one day. So it's still intraday trading, but I try to keep the trades open as long as possible and catch big moves during the day. Also, I talked about it a lot that um, I'm a big fan of the stock market in general, which of course is uh, like somehow related also to investing, but but just because it makes sense. Like if we have a look at long-term stock charts, like here, for example, the indices, and I, I showed this often and I always talk about this, like indices, they historically, they were always kind of strong because um, the economies are, are working and the, the stock should become more, uh, more valuable and and this idea that i then had was i mean i can trade the index and i do this with my like go long strategy also i traded with the range breakout ea and turn around tuesday etc etc this follows all the same idea trading the indices and going mainly long because of this uh, bias that we have but then i also had this idea in the back of my mind to trade stocks and in the last year i also started to trading to uh, started to trade stocks like with range breakout ea also long going long after a um, specific time and then see if the market can go up even more because as you can see here like stocks should go up on average and if we don't have a look at um, indices now but instead we have a look at single stocks like amazon uh, i think this is alibaba bank of america google microsoft netflix nvidia apple not all of these charts but most of the charts especially the the tech um uh stocks here they they also used to go up in the in the past and i mean it's always questionable if this will continue in the future but this is my idea and 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 what i based my idea on like why do we always have to trade indices if we can also trade stocks so i created my stock portfolio manager and this does something similar to what I do in the indices, but um, I want to check if there's a different outcome if instead of indices, I trade stocks. So I had a look at all of the stocks here that I have, and this is um, with FTMO as a broker. So you could use this for FTMO challenges and stuff. And here I figured out that the trading costs, and this is my next step that I then usually check because the trading costs are super important for the success of your trading idea. I try to figure out how big the trading costs are. So I have a look at, um, at like a commission. I do some calculations, how big the commission really is. I look at the swaps. I look at the spreads. Uh, I look at all of this kind of stuff. And then I decide if this could be profitable. And if I think the costs are relatively small or reasonable, then I start to develop strategies. So I wrote some, some code for this uh, portfolio manager. And you can see here, this is like a, a concept where I created this like C stock class so I can trade all of the stocks um, at the same time. And then in the on tick, I like um, a loop through the trades and stuff and open positions and close positions. But I don't want to talk about coding too much. I want to explain my idea of developing this strategy. Oh yeah, but maybe one coding thing. What I did is I included all of the stocks here, or these are the US stocks that I have with FTMO. So you can see, I just um, added all of the symbols that FTMO offers here for stock trading. And then with all of these symbols, I just said, I want to test this. So what I said is I wanna, I can show this for like um, 
the last uh, one one or two years so then i went with any symbol here in the tester <coughs> And I use my stock portfolio manager and you can see if I speed this up a little bit, once we see the first signals, it will load the all of these um, stocks because I include all of them in my, uh, in my trading idea. So I have to wait a second until all of the data is loaded. This usually takes uh, a moment when using multiple stocks or multiple charts. So there we go. So you can see um, US 100 is my main open chart here, but we can also see trades in these other um, symbols. And this is because my stock portfolio manager, it manages uh, a stock portfolio. So all of these uh, different stocks, and this is great to really test a portfolio easily in one test run. And you don't have to do like complex uh, comparison and uh, like correlation analysis um so yeah that's that's basically what the strategy does so you can see it's a very easy strategy it checks like all of the um uh, all of the stocks and if then a stock uh, generates a new high after i think 18 uh, o'clock or 6 p.m then it opens a position like um, at the end of the one minute candle i usually create my uh, testing programs if possible on a one minute basis to speed up the testing process and yeah you can see it just creates the position has a little stop loss in place um, all of the positions have the same risk and then at the end of the day the position is closed to prevent gaps like this and this is basically what um, the strategy does in uh, all of the charts here so i don't know like um, some of these have open positions, uh, some of these uh, will not have open positions if the day did not find a new high yet. And that's what the uh, portfolio manager does basically. So after figuring out that my strategy in general works, I um, test it for a longer period of time. So I went ahead and said, how much data do I have? And for FTMO, I had data from the end of 2021 until the current point in time. So I can only test the years that I have. So I tested for the last, uh, for about four years here. And then I don't really need the visual mode anymore because I know my strategy works technically there are no issues with the coding so then i can go ahead and test without the visual mode to just speed up the test okay so here you can see the test is over and when i saw this result i was a little bit disappointed because i expected more from a ever-growing stock market if i just trade the single stocks so i was wondering what the frick is going on and if i see a performance like this the first thing i usually try is just go back to my code and whenever I um, I buy, I, I then sell. So I just turned around the, the signal here. And this uh, should create a, a positive equity curve, right? And spoiler alert, it did not. The other way around was even worse and the loss was even bigger, which is a clear sign that it's not the strategy which is the problem, but instead it is the trading costs that we have. So what I did then is I went back to my code and I use the uh, on tester function to figure out how much profit every single stock made. And then I also figured out how much spread do I pay on average for every single trade. And this is the result that I then see in my journal. So you can see out of the uh, all of these stocks here, we saw some of the stocks, stocks were actually profitable, like Apple, Amazon, uh, Alibaba, uh, Google was profitable, Microsoft, Netflix, Nvidia, uh, and Tesla was profitable. A lot of these were profitable, but also we saw huge losses in some of these other symbols, like uh, I think this is like Zoom or uh, Visa or uh, AT&T, um, Meta, Bank of America. So in a lot of these, I saw very bad results. And what is more interesting than the actual profit is the second uh, key figure that I uh, printed here, which is the relative cost that we see in the spread. So yeah, and here we can see that, um, for example, for Zoom, <laughs> which is the biggest or one of the biggest losers here, uh, I think the biggest loser in absolute numbers, <laughs> we can see the 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 spread that we pay per trade is 0.14% of the of the current price at this day when we open the position, like on every single day. 
which means that um yeah it's just a huge number like if we if we think that stocks move on average per day i don't know let's say one or two percent um i think it's more like one percent maybe then um the the costs here are almost um a fifth of this or a sixth so and we can see this when we go through this like when we see the winners and the losers like we can see a very relatively small spread has uh, Alibaba here. And we see um, this one was profitable. Bank of America had a little bit bigger spread, was negative, but not like the biggest spread. But then we can see Google has a small spread, positive. Meta also has a small spread, but it's negative. Microsoft has a small spread, it's positive. Uh, Netflix not does not have the, the smallest spread, but it's positive. Nvidia, small spread, positive. Pfizer, um, a little bit bigger spread, negative. Race, very big spread, uh, also very negative. Like this is the biggest loser. Uh, this is um, Ferrari, I think. Then uh, at and very big spread, negative. Tesla, small spread, po positive. Um, Visa, um, negative, not the biggest spread, but still, uh, yeah, bigger spread. Uh, Walmart, uh, profitable with a uh, smaller spread and zoom i talked about this has a very big spread and is negative uh, so you can see it's not always like you cannot always apply this rule like uh, small spread means profitability but on average or as a general rule we can see like at least the ones with a very very big spread like ferrari or zoom or um, what else do we have here um um, or at and they were like very, very bad for the performance. So next thing I did is like, and, and, and there's nothing you can do. Like if a symbol has a very bad, um, like cost structure, like a commission spread, a swap, if, if, if applied to your strategy, like if the trading costs are just not in your favor, I would not recommend and try to find something that works in these symbols i would just not trade them it's really that simple like the trading cost is one of the most important factors for me to decide if i trade a strategy or a symbol or not so what i did then is i i, I thought this strategy could still be uh, positive right but i kind of took out all of the um all of the stocks that have a very high spread like here at t zoom uh ferrari uh, pfizer bank of america like all of these uh like higher spreads like above um 0. Uh, 0. 0.05 percent i took them out i mean i, I kept netflix because it's uh, profitable and uh it has a uh, also a high like fluctuation during the day but i kicked out some of these like um, higher um, uh, higher spread symbols and then I did the same test again so um, after kicking out some of these symbols like in specific Bank of America, Pfizer, Ferrari, um, uh, at and and Zoom I then um, was having this performance that we see in a second so there we go same test uh, same strategy but we just took out all of the symbols that have like a very unfair cost structure and this increased the profitability by a lot so if we have a look at the journal again uh, we can see of course some of these stocks are still negative but a lot of these stocks are now profitable over this period of time and now we kind of only have the ones left with a quite good uh, profit uh, margin and then I had a look at this again. I saw that I mean, I mean like Netflix still has kind of high cost uh, Visa kind of has higher cost. So I I don't know. I, I took some more out like Netflix Visa. I don't know why I took out Walmart. I think it's uh, because it's not like um, as profitable as uh, as the rest but then I took out some more and here some might say this is curve fitting or stuff. But yeah, I took some out, some more out and tested this again with only the high performer. And here we see now mainly tech stocks that um, of course usually have a, have a high like fluctuation. They have bigger moves because it's also a, a lot of these stocks are hype stocks. 
And I kind of want this. I want the stocks that have a high movement potential because then I feel like the trading costs can be even lower in relation to the to the fluctuation, like the movement of these stocks. So let, let's wait for the, um, the result here. Okay, there we go. So this is uh, the outcome and it's completely uh, subjective if you want to keep like all of the stocks with a good uh, cost ratio or if you take them out, like this is, um, everyone can decide of course, but this is uh, overall profitable now theoretically uh, based on historical data then of course i also did the comparison to the overall market because this is uh, and i, I took uh, mainly um, the us 100 here because most of these stocks are in the in the nasdaq so if we compare uh, this performance here wait i want to close this uh, if we compare the the performance here and um yeah i started at end of 2021 yeah, we cannot really perfectly align it here but yeah you can see the uh, us 100 was going down a lot even more of course than my strategy but also the us 100 had bigger negative periods i think so here we lost like 25 percent in the meantime and i think my drawdown is a little bit less but yeah overall this is for me a performance that is quite nice because we see an overall profit for me it's very important that i believe in the uh, that i believe a strategy is logical this is one of the most important points for me and for me it is completely logical that stocks will go up then we can also have a look at the key figures here we have a profitable uh, profit factor we can see like yeah some of the uh, key figures here so this is pretty much my process that i did oh and of course in the meantime i did some uh, optimizations here like i found uh, the, the times that work quite well i found the stop loss percentage that i want to use for every trade i played around with filters and stuff but eventually didn't use them so yeah this is a little insight in how i develop strategies and with this diagram or backtest or graph this is definitely something i would use in a for example ftmo account because even though this is not always profitable of course as no strategy is we see more periods where it's going good than periods where it is going back so what i could also do is uh, play around a little bit with the risk so i could say for example i increase the risk to two or three times the size and then this will also or even more and this will also maybe not go too crazy but this will also of course have an impact on the uh, on the outcome of this and this um yeah makes the 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 profits even bigger but of course also the drawdowns but this would be for example a good strategy that i would use for just passing challenges or uh, and verifications somewhat quickly because you can see like there would be many points in time when we would have started trading this um strategy and it would have passed the challenge and uh, verification phase uh, easily with a strategy like this so there's a little insight in uh, yeah strategy development let me know what you think in the comments below and yeah hope you liked like the insight i'm out guys have a have a great time and and good trades bye bye